Hello, Mysterious Twas and Mind Screen, and welcome back to the ongoing series of Star Wars audio commentaries with me and Isaac. Hello, this is not going to go the way you think. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if you haven't guessed, we are doing Episode 8, The Last Jedi. Um, so, once again, no specifying which version of the film here, it's just the one version everywhere around the world. So, without further ado... If you'd like to sync this up with your own copy of The Last Jedi, uh, put the film to the start... And press play in three, two, one, go. Now for the opening crawl, I'm going to read this in the voice of Chief Wiggum from The Simpsons. Excellent. <laughs> Star Wars. Wiggum. <laughs> Episode uh, 8 Ah, The Last Jedi The First Order reigns <laughs> Having decimated the peaceful republic Supreme Leader Snoke has now deploys his merciless legions To seize military control of the galaxy Only General Leia Organa's band of resistance fighters <laughs> Stand against the rising tyranny Certain that Jedi Master uh, Luke Skywalker will return and restore a spark of hope to the fight. But the resistance has been exposed. As the First Order speeds towards the Rebel base, the brave heroes mount a desperate escape. Wake up. Oh boy, that sounded bad. Bad cops, bad cops. <laughs> <laughs> so um this co I'm willing to bet the um comment section of this could be interesting. <laughs> well, yeah, it certainly yeah, uh... it depends on one's viewpoint I guess about this film cuz this is easily the most divisive Star Wars film ever, I think. Um, yeah, so. it is. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, and, it's um, interesting. Some people have made it their living hating this movie and yeah i don't get why <laughs> yeah me, me neither i think um i think it's safe to say we're both fans of it and i guess we'll um i think it's the best of the um disney era yeah i films. would agree yeah in fact it's probably it's at this point in time it's my third favorite star wars film after star wars and empire it's uh, for me i probably I'd probably put it at fourth, because I'd probably put Return of the Jedi higher than this. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I, um, I do respect Ryan Johnson a lot for taking the, for not trying to do a repeat. Because mm. this film, for me, it doesn't feel like repeat, it feels more like rhyming, because it's what George Lucas has said, I don't like to repeat, I like to rhyme. Yes. And, yeah. yeah and if 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 reports are to go by he um he preferred this film to force awakens he 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 um he, yeah so he called it um beautifully made i think yes. was that his comment that was his quote yeah which yeah mhm mm and i mean it is different it really is different because you know i i remember seeing this in the cinema at the time and thinking yeah this this feels different to the force awakens somehow and i don't think at the time i couldn't really pinpoint what it was but um yeah it, there's definitely yeah. a different tone like even to the humor at, at the start of this it is definitely a different feel and um mm -hmm. i've got i have no problem with the humor here i know a lot of people don't like the the, the jokes here um I yeah. got no problem with it really, but yeah, because um, I don't have a problem with it, and it it's there to establish uh, the type of person Poe is, because he kind of aspires to be those um, rookie scoundrel uh, pilot badasses. Yeah, but um, what he le he learns to be a uh, better leader from this. Yeah, exactly, and I I also think it it, it does wonders for General Hux's character as well. Because I think this whole thing yeah. where he's rep he's he's repeating the the same sort of villainous spiel, um, you know, trying to trying to cultivate this identity really, and it it's just it it feels like an act at this point. 
Um, yeah. Which I know a lot of people picked up on as like, oh, he's so bad in, in this film. A lot of people say that that, that Donald Gleason's really bad, but I think it's... I, I like... It's almost like he's putting on that act, um, trying to yeah, be definitely. This, this stereotypical villainous character, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've got Adrian Edmondson as the as the uh, the officer there as well, which was a yeah a cameo <laughs> I enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, the um, reaction to this was um, vocal to say the least. Um, yeah. I remember obviously I went to the cinema; it was packed. Um, saw it with a few friends. We walked out of it liking it a lot, and. Um, mm. I mean, I spoke to a few, I was at uni at the time, I spoke to a few people who had seen it afterwards and they were like, um, I didn't like it too much because I don't think it met my expectations. Mm. And, yeah. It is interesting. Do you think, um, yeah, do you think its reputation has improved a bit more? or? I I think in the wake of the of the rise of Skywalker, I think its reputation has improved. Yeah, I definitely think I don't yeah. I don't quite see the the vitriol directed towards it specifically these days. It's more towards the trilogy as a whole now, whereas it used That's to true, be. Yeah. It used to be like in the aftermath of this, it was just at this film because they they sort of perceived it as as ruining what the the Force Awakens set up. Whereas now it's definitely yeah. a, a general dislike towards the whole trilogy now that we've seen it, um, it wrapped up and concluded. Yeah, but as soon as the next film comes along, people start decrying, this is the worst oh, thing yeah. to happen to Star Wars <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, it was a bold statement just then, though, like destroying one of the big locations from The Force Awakens, like immediately in the first five minutes of the film, just destroyed. Yeah. It's gone. yeah mm-hmm. So it's quite a, quite a big statement. Mm-hmm. One thing I don't like about the film, though, um, and I guess it's not really a problem, um, it's just sort of circumstances of the story, is um, 3PO doesn't get a lot to do in this, and um, his his presence feels a bit superfluous. Um, it's not quite yeah. as bad as, as Rise of Skywalker, but he's definitely... <laughs> yeah, I, I, it feels like he's in this just so also... that they can say he's in it, really. I mean, I'd say that with Chewie as well, because for me, yeah. Chewie only works when he's got Han with him, because, you know, Chewie's kind of a reactionary character. You know, you've got to have other people around him in order for him to work. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, cause, yeah, yeah, you can't just have a monster growling all the time because the audience isn't going to understand what's going on, it'll know, and it'll turn into... Yeah, um, the holiday special. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I was going to bring up the holiday special. It's like you can't mm-hmm. really have them on their own. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yes, you can't drop bombs in space, mm. and uh, there also <laughs> should be uh, no sound in space. So um, oh, yeah, you should be moaning at that as well. Yeah, exactly, right. and. Uh... You know, I bet I bet you're a blast at parties. Whoever yeah, says that, yeah, right. And also, um, you know, the exact same thing happened in Empire Strikes Back, and nobody has a problem with that. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's. I feel like there's going to be a lot of that in this commentary. It's going to be a lot of us saying, "Well, oh, yeah. this exact same thing happened in that other film, and you didn't have a problem with that. So, what's what's different?" <laughs> Yeah, the response you'll get is, um, yeah, but, no, but it wasn't being done by people who hate white men. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, of course, of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I um... mean, I think, um, what, what's his name? George Shred? Sheard? Is that his name? He shared an, he shared, like, a screenshot of a YouTube video moaning about Kathleen Kennedy and, you know, saying about Indiana Jones, the latest one, and basically oh, right, yeah. his response was, um, you know, you do know she's been the producer since what? She's been part of Lucasfilm since what it first yeah. was created. It's not like she 
miraculously came out of nowhere to push a made-up agenda in 2017. Yeah, exactly. She's been a... Yeah. She's been a producer longer than you've probably been alive. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and that's one of these things. It's like, well... I, I, I don't I don't understand where you're coming... Because it'd be one thing if she joined with the Disney era of Star Wars films. If she joined Lucasfilm yeah. there. But she's produced Indiana Jones, E.T. Um, yeah. You know, she's, she's been a producer... If you actually look at her filmography, she has been involved in so many, like, classic films. Um, exactly, you know, yeah. Her name is, is all over the place. I, I don't understand yeah. this, this belief that her presence specifically is is what's ruining star well Wars. um <laughs> well george well george lucas was the antichrist to so many people when the prequels were out and oh, now yeah. she's she's kind of taken up that mantle for these people yeah yeah right yeah <laughs> where whenever star wars gets passed on to the next person uh they'll be the antichrist <laughs> yes yes they will yeah so i think this sequence with page and the and the bombs this is i think this is spectacular this is nothing we've ever seen before in star wars i don't Mm -hmm. think um just the way it's directed um we we talked over it a minute ago but that shot where they were um the first order officers it was going through the ship and the the camera was continuously moving and like going from side to side left to right uh all the officers shouting Mm -hmm. like it's so dynamic and i just think it's really brilliantly done yeah so inventive visually. Mm-hmm. I can remember when it came out. Didn't certain cinemas have signs saying, um, <laughs> be warned, the sound cuts out for yeah. 10 seconds, but don't worry, that's part of the film. Yeah, like, I remember that. How do you think people are? <laughs> Come on. I can understand uh. it if it was like a one minute sequence, but it was literally 10 yeah. seconds. It's like... <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah. it's, it's so daft. <laughs> Something that's true about this film, I think, is um, R- Ryan Johnson and this this whole this film especially, and his, the rest of his f- filmography like Knives Out. I get the sense mm-hmm. that he is he's one of those directors where there are every shot in the film has a story to it. Um, there's, yeah. there's a story mm-hmm. behind every single shot, and I get that sense from this and Knives Out, and it reminds me of someone like Edgar Wright or Sam Raimi where every single little bit of the film has a story to it and there's a, there's an explanation behind um that that element of the film and um it's it's not like other fil- like the Marvel Cinematic Universe to be fair like I love the MCU but a lot of their films mm-hmm. are sort of they seem to be directed by committee and it's they they look kind of bland yeah um whereas this is so like the, the flair to it visually is, is incredible and I, I just love the direction and everything it's i love ryan johnson's work mm-hmm. on it yeah definitely yeah it's um it's a gorgeous looking film because there's so many um fret sequences that you could frame and put on a poster oh yeah absolutely I think that's great yeah absolutely yeah um yeah, and with it being a Ryan Johnson film, there's a lot of his uh, actors that he reuses in a lot of his films pop up in this as little cameos as well. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, I hadn't really seen any of his films bef- b- before this. Yeah, me neither. But I've seen knives. I've seen knives out, which is really good. It really is. Yeah, I- I'm looking forward. And to what is he's he got still? Next. Is he still working on a new Star Wars trilogy? No one seems to be knowing what's happening with that because I remember it. It was definitely happening, and then there were no, there's no news about it, and everyone sort of 
taking it as ha, you know, we, they know they know how bad the last Jedi was, so they're not letting him do it. Um, and, uh, I I I no. I think a lot of it is probably just because he's working on Knives Out sequels, and he's probably just it's yeah. one of those projects that he's got on the back burner, really. Now I can remember this moment in the cinema. So many people started <laughs> laughing, but then they were kind of like. What? <laughs> Something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I... I remember my... Yeah, go on. I remember my jaw dropped. I was like, wait, what just happened? He just... <laughs> yeah. Oh! Yeah. Um, I, I, I saw this three times in the cinema, and each time was sort of a bit different, the reaction to that. The, the first time was sort of like that. It was sort of a bit of laughter, but also... Wait, what, what just happened? Um, second time, yeah. it was complete laughter from the audience. The audience was in hysterics. Third time, dead silence. So it's just, it's just this spectrum of reactions. And it is interesting because a lot of this film will live or die on whether you like old man Grumpy Luke. Mm-hmm. Well, in fairness, when George Lucas was making... Uh, was devising the original trilogy he and originally envisaged luke as a grumpy old man (laughs) yeah yeah that's the thing isn't it Uh, a lot of uh george lucas's vision for luke is in this i think and it's interesting when you know a lot of people like the hashtag not my luke and stuff Um, yeah that that's this this whole rabbit hole that we could probably record a podcast like two hours just discussing luke in this film <laughs> um but, <Yep. laughs> but suffice it to say like every every time i see people going oh it's not in it's so out of character i i, I don't get it i don't get it 30 years have passed um he's been through a lot of trauma uh, thematically i think it works with him trying to run away from his pain and then learning at the end to, to sort of yeah. confront it and everything and yeah, because yeah, he's yeah, because Luke's not a perfect character, and yeah, yeah, I do like how he became this legendary figure, and we're kind of in the audience shoes with Ray, we expect him to be the greatest Jedi ever, the power of a god, or something like that, and um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it completely turns on our expectations. Yeah, absolutely, and I think it works quite nicely. Off, the, off of the back of The Force Awakens too, because that film was about mm-hmm. Rey searching for her kind of identity um, and, mm-hmm. and and that leads into this with Luke searching for himself again. I think it kind of yeah. it mirrors it quite well, I think. Why does Snoke look like Hugh Hefner? <laughs> oh, it's the, it's the gold. He looks like <laughs> the gold. He's rope. dressed like yeah. It's just like the gold rope. He's dressed like some kind of pimp. Um, <laughs> pimp, yeah. yeah. Snoke the pimp. Snoke the pimp. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does look brilliant in this. Like Andy Circus is knocking it out of the park in this. Yeah, this. Yeah, the CGI is way better than the last film. It really is, yeah, and I, it is just because they have, because he's in this film so much. It's, it's, it's Andy Circus getting to really stretch his mocap muscles again, and br- bring a golem to yeah. life and a Caesar to life again. I love that as well. Like, take that ridiculous thing off. Like every everyone around yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, he's just... basically saying who you're trying who you're trying to fool. You're still a young pretty boy. <laughs> yeah, and it's almost there's no hesitation when he when he takes it off as well. It's almost like he knows that it's just completely ridiculous that he's that he's still wearing it. So um I these Praetorian guards um I 
I have a big cardboard cutout of one of those guys because oh, that's cool. I found him in a charity shop for five pounds. <laughs> oh, nice. He was in the uh, when I was at college. The, um, there was a charity shop just around the corner, and he was in there for ages. I thought, oh, he's probably quite expensive. Um, no, five pounds. So I've got him. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> he's really cool. So for the rest of the film, he doesn't wear his mask then. Uh, I'm sure. No, yeah, yeah, because they made a yeah. big thing in the Rise of Skywalker mar- marketing where it's like the mask is back. Um, yeah. So yeah, for the rest of this film, he's yeah, which is it's mm-hmm. is pretty brave. I've got to say, like having you know, because Kylo Ren is 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 the, is, is the yeah. oh bless you, um, is the you. Vader of the trilogy with the, with the recognizable mask and everything it was brave to have a film where he doesn't wear it for like 95 percent of it mm-hmm. lucas's original ideas for the sequel trilogy you know when he was planning it out his ideas were um about what do you do when you have one? How do you rebuild society? Mm. And I think, particularly this film, that's the one that comes closest to this. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Because what does Luke does now that he's redeemed his father become and become a Jedi? Yeah. What if he failed to live up to that legacy? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, it's, it's, it's the best... The reason it's my favourite of the trilogy is because it's, it's the one that really comes close and really does justify the existence of, of these new films. Because a lot of people are like, well, you know, we had a perfect ending with Return of the Jedi. Why why, why do we have to ruin that to get more stories? And this is the one that I think that justifies that. Because it has something mm-hmm. interesting to say about the characters. Yeah. Oh, even this is controversial, the whole oh, yeah. seal tit milk like okay i'll admit it's a bit gratuitous yeah but, um, it's just it's just there to sh- it's there to show how lucas survived on this island for yeah. as long as he has yeah exactly what he drinks what he eats things like that oh yeah. uh, it's become a meme hasn't it it's become a massive yeah meme, the yeah. drinking of the milk and going <laughs> it's just that the creature looks at ray as if to say now you <laughs> I was saying this is John Williams' best score out of the sequel trilogy. I think. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, I even said when I first saw it, if you're a big fan of the Force theme, you'll love this. Oh score. yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think later on, the Battle of Crate, that theme, is so impressive. Mm-hmm. Like how it, it just it stops and starts and changes different styles like every minute or so, and it all feels like one piece. It's really impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've said before. Um... Oh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, <laughs> I love the um, sequel trilogy documentaries that came with the Blu-rays because they're practically films in their own right. <laughs> oh, for sure, yeah. for sure. That they're, they're all like an hour and a half long, aren't they? They're really quite extensive mm-hmm. yeah they're really in depth mm. and stuff like that and you know just watching them so many people and you just see so many comments that like um say oh there was no passion behind this there was nothing behind it oh yeah yeah when i ju- when i watch those documentaries i'm just like really <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely i i've still not seen the one for rise of skywalker actually i should watch that soon but um yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I have seen the Rise of Skywalker documentary more than I have the film. 
that in a while. In fact, had it not, in fact, had it not been for that documentary, I probably wouldn't have bought the film. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, well, because yeah, I was looking at the bonus features and it said, um, you know, completing the S- Skywalker saga, and I thought, oh, I bet that's going to be a really long documentary, and it's like two hours long, so I thought, yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I, I, I would have bought it anyway, just because Star Wars. I have to complete yeah. it, but I waited a while. I waited a long mm-hmm. while for that. Um, but. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, the documentaries on this, and I think maybe for the Rise of Skywalker, you could, you could level that criticism about there being no passion behind it at the script, but the actual filmmaking yeah. in that is phenomenal, mm-hmm. and you can see it in these documentaries. Like all of these actors and these crew members and these directors were working so mm-hmm. hard on these three films. Yeah, definitely. Because inter- I Luke's asking. Oh, yep, go on. <laughs> I, was, I was just gonna say, Luke's asking her, "Why are you here?" You fr- and she, and you know, she just says, "I'm from nowhere. I'm from Jakku." And again, it just reinforces that idea that um, yeah, yeah, you know, Ray doesn't think herself as the hero. She wants other people who have a name, who she thinks are somebody, to be the hero for her. Hence, why she's there for Luke. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. But eventually it's her who leaves the planet to try and bring, bring Kylo Ren to the light side. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I think this is the first time I've watched this since The Rise of Skywalker, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think this is the first time I've watched it since, since seeing episode 9 so it's kind of interesting looking back on this <laughs> it is yeah mm-hmm. and Carrie Fisher man like at the time because this was a year after she had passed away and at the time we were all sort of yeah. wondering how uh, you know w- were they going to make edits to this one to kind of kill her off or take her out of the story before um yeah. Before episode nine, uh, but now they keep her in it, and yeah, they do. Yeah, she's incredible in this film. I think she is great. Yeah, I also think it's Mark Hamill's best performance as Luke Skywalker as well. Ah, uh, same. Uh, yeah, same here. Oh fucking hell! Here we go. Is the whole Akbar <laughs> shouldn't have died? <laughs> Akbar lives. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it should have been Admiral Akbar. <laughs> I can remember <sighs> seeing a video by What Culture. You know, they said uh, the title was "Top Ten Ways You Could Improve the Last Jedi," and you know, I thought, yeah, okay, God. I'm open-minded. Let's see what they have to say. <laughs> Number ten, Admiral Akbar should have been. The one to do the sacrifice. Okay, bye. Oh my god, right? <laughs> like, that is such a stupid... Like, that is fan I remember, service uh, at its yeah. most egregious if they would do that, if they did that. Because yeah. it's just silly. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Yeah, because... Yeah, why does Admiral Akbar have to do it? Because mm. he's not a character. He's just a meme. Exactly. That's why you like him. Yeah, and I don't care if he popped up in the Clone Wars cartoon. I love that show as well, but you're making a film for the mainstream audience. Right? They're yeah. not going to know about his, the adventures of Admiral Akbar in comic book one three nine zero. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think like as as it's a, if you're going to kill off a character from the original trilogy to really make an impact on yeah these guys are screwed and uh, things are desperate. Well, who are you going to kill off? Probably Admiral Akbar. Yeah. 
He's probably the one because he's recognizable to the mainstream. Yeah, he he you know everyone yeah. knows it's a trap. He would kill him off, right? Because that's quite impactful, and everyone sort yeah. of would get that impact. But I doubt anyone would necessarily be mourning him. They just go, "Oh shit, mm-hmm. he was a character from the original films." That, that's quite big. But... Yeah, exactly. And I'll admit, the problem I have with this uh, chase scene is the whole code breaker thing, because it's it just seems so specific and bizarre just to do a, a very simple thing. Yeah. So you've got to go to a planet where this one guy knows how to deactivate it. So you're telling me there's no one in the resistance who's a code breaker already? Yeah, I, that's always kind of bothered me as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the fact it'd be like going to Switzerland to get a piece of paper. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, it's 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 not something that that really bugs me. Um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely the the the, the, the um, what's it called Canto Bite. That's kind of the section of the film that I'm least uh, act, like the yeah. the one that I'm least. Uh, actively passionate about should we say like i don't dislike it but yeah. it's definitely the one the, the part of the element of the film and i think like, yeah. <laughs> and i think some people kind of blow it out of proportion when they criticize it i mean they it's do. fair enough if you don't like the sequence but they're like oh it takes up so much of the film it's so boring it's so long it goes on forever yeah if you count up how long they're there it's about 15 minutes yeah it's not that long it's not that long at all <laughs> out um, of a two and a half hour film yeah and it's not yeah. like the food then you know a good uh majority of that 15 minutes is action um yeah. My my problem with it is just, it is a bit of a diversion, but it's not a long diversion. It it you know it's It's just a bit too much of a detour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah, here we go. The famous layer poppins. Yeah. What did you think of this when you first saw it? I was like, Yeah, she's using the force. I just thought it was a really nice moment. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. like I initially, I was sort of like, "Oh, what's kind of happening here?" But I think it hit me at the time because obviously she she not long passed away, and seeing yeah, I thought she was gonna. I thought, "Oh, is this how she dies?" Yeah, same. <laughs> and it, like it hit me at the time, like hearing the, um, Leia's theme, just like uh, coming into the soundtrack. It, it was getting me, you know, it was getting me emotionally invested, and um, I don't mind it at all. Like people again, people blow it out of proportion. It's not a big moment at all, but... Yeah. Yeah. And it, it foreshadows the thing later, because she goes directly through the hologram um, and splits the hologram <laughs> in half, which is, you know, foreshadowing. Oh, yeah, she does. Yeah, she splits <laughs> it in half. So, yeah, mm-hmm. foreshadowing for later. And it is interesting. I, I wonder if this was done after she died. Um, they make a bigger role of her daughter in this film. Um, the character that her daughter plays is is, do, yeah. is given more to do. Um, she's still a minor character, but she's more um, relevant in this. And I, I think I wonder if that was done afterwards to sort of, I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me. That pork chicken looks really nice. It does, right? <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I think this is hilarious, though, with the porks watching Chewie. I can remember when they appeared in the trailer, so many people thought they were going to be the next Jar Jar Bings, but yeah, yeah they're literally there as just unofficial residents of the island. Well, I feel like that goes for any any like alien that appears in Star Wars trailers these days. People are going to go, oh, it's the next Jar Jar. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, 
That's... Now, um, I do know Mark Hamill did disagree with Ryan Johnson. He did, yeah. Uh, about how Luke should be portrayed. But, um, yeah, that doesn't stop me from enjoying the film. Yeah, and people use that. No matter how many times you say, yeah, but you can't like it because <laughs> Mark Hamill disliked it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so what? Right? Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, Andrew Morgan, who directed Time and the Rani, says it's not something I'm proud of in my career. <laughs> but I've spoken to plenty of fans who say they like Time and the Rani. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and I, I, people use that a lot to be like, oh, Mark Hamill was yeah. betrayed and and all it, and it's like, look, on any production, no matter what it is, no matter if it's the most perfect film imaginable and everything went smoothly, there will always be disagreements and there will always be yes. creative differences between actors and directors and you know it's a collaborative effort film is a collaborative medium and not everyone's going to agree 100 percent of the is, time yeah mm-hmm. it does yeah it, it is a shame because sometimes mark hamill will tweet like something about this and uh <laughs> something like oh um when my character was a symbol of hope or something and people use it to really <laughs> rag on the last jedi and it is a shame because i don't yeah. think he means that i think he's literally just tweeting exactly, what he, yeah. he doesn't necessarily mean to, as it as a diss on the film um it's just mm-hmm. yeah but people like to use it <laughs> as that unfortunately mm-hmm I know a criticism here is that some people say that um, it's a bit out of character for Finn to run away. But in the context of this film, I do think it works. And also with how he acted in The Force Awakens. Yeah. Because as mentioned there, he he wasn't really up for fighting them. He just wanted to get away. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But, he, but through Rose, he learns that... Um, you know, this affects everyone, so we're all going to have to stand and fight. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and he, here's Holdo, the, who people hate. Mm-hmm. Who people hate because she's got purple hair. And apparently, that's a big controversial yeah. thing. Not because she's got purple hair. Yeah, that was a big controversial oh. thing. Like ever, like you speak to people like passionate. Um, people who who passionately yeah. dislike this, and a lot of people say, "Oh, purple hair and Star Wars." I mean, it's just like, like oh, uh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's just like the again. That's another one of the, one of the silliest complaints I've ever heard. I think. Yeah. And uh, oh god, uh, Poe just said two lines of dialogue there that sums up this entire film. That's Admiral Holdo, Battle of Croydon Belt, Admiral Holdo. Not what I expected. Not what I expected. <laughs> again, <laughs> again, it's it's another case of subverting expectations because Ray's probably like, "That's Luke Skywalker, the legendary Luke Skywalker." That's what I expected. Yeah, right. That's the co- That's the master codebreaker. Not what I, I expected. Not what I expected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he, I, I mean, he, like all jokes aside about the purple hair thing, like people do have genuine issues with Holdo, and that is fair enough. Um, the, the you know the whole thing about her, that like these two not communicating what their plans are and stuff. I'm still like a little iffy on that. I will admit. Um, it's um, well, she does yeah. say um, she does say you're impulsive, and obviously what he did at the start of the film by yeah disobeying Leia's commands and acting all like a rookie and being I'm the cool pilot, um, mm. doing that. I think that's why she doesn't tell him, but. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you'd think, regardless of that, she'd still tell him. Yeah, exactly. What, he, what she was gonna do. Yeah, um, I get where I yeah. get where the film's coming from, but yeah, yeah. And that, that's 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 a complaint again. I think it's blown out of proportion. I really think that is blown out of proportion. But yeah, it does. It is a bit of a one of the weak mm-hmm. points of this. I think. Ah, uh, Kelly Marie Tran. 
Poor Kelly Marie Tran. I can't believe all that. Her audition process took about five to six months, something like that. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah. It's just such a shame what happened. Because mm. I don't know... And so many of those passionate haters will insist, oh, but she left social media because uh, she couldn't handle uh, the pressure of being famous. No, it's being proven that she was harassed. Yeah, So yeah. don't try and... Don't try and justify that just because you dislike the character. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, I don't know if you followed her on Instagram before she was deleted, but she was just, like, every single day was just positivity. Like, she was always posting yeah. photos of herself with, like, the toys um, and just, like, with the biggest smile on her face and, like, surrounded by porgs and stuff. And she was just so over the moon to be a part of Star Wars. And that's when when she did leave it was just so sad because of how positive she was beforehand yeah. really and it pisses me off how they were just giving in to those pathetic man babies who bullied her oh yeah in rise of skywalker by having well what giving her two minutes of screen time mm. oh. she gets like two lines and that is one that like i don't get angry about like films or tv anymore um because it's just like what's no, the that genuinely pissed and me because off because we're adults oh yeah no absolutely absolutely it, it yeah. Did, yeah that like uh, obviously like we're adults you know like we've moved past the point of getting angry at like creative decisions in media but that is one of the one things in in recent memory that pissed me off like the the fact that they 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 gave rose like two lines that really did annoy me yeah because it just felt like because there's an interview with um Kelly Marie Tran as well on on um, the red carpet for the Rise of Skywalker, and the interviewer goes, uh, "So how, mm-hmm. you know, um how how are we going to see Rose's story continue in this film?" And Kelly Marie Tran just sort of goes, ha, 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 "Um uh, well you know we'll see we'll, we, yeah she's got some stuff to do," oh. and it's just like oh fuck yeah. no. oh. Oh. <sighs> Because I don't. She should have been joining them yeah. when they were hopping across from planet to planet. She should have been with them. She should have. She absolutely should have. And I, right, I don't like. What does Rose do in this film that's so bad? Other than a, a bit of a forced love I don't story. No. Like yeah. I don't get why she's so. Because it's like I can get the backlash towards Jar Jar. Because he is annoying, and he, you know, he he does he is overbearing in that film. What mm-hmm. what does Rose do to warrant this much hate? I don't get it. I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. It's the equivalent of getting mad at like, I don't know, Hoffman in 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 Spider Man Two. Like this this <laughs> this character that does fuck all. <laughs> Like, like, what does he do that pisses that pisses people off? But it's like the equivalent of making like rant videos that are an hour hour long about him. <laughs> it's just like I yeah, don't get. I just, yeah, uh... I don't get it. I don't get it. Mhm. But I I've read a story where um they're at a convention. It was either promoting the Last Jedi or just like Star Wars celebration, maybe something like that. And um, she came. Um, apparently all the all the fans cheered for her when she came on to do the panel I think with Ryan Johnson as well and uh, other cast members oh nice so yeah so that's good yeah I think recently she wrote Cause I just hope she I just hope she realises that um, all those trolls on the internet they don't represent all the Star Wars fandom I hope so because um, Hayden Christensen said that to her didn't he I don't know if they spoke in private he, he did, might yeah. have just said it like as a message to her like but he did he did sort of offer some words of comfort to her and she did write like That's a big good. piece I, it was in a magazine i think or some article she wrote like this whole story about what she went through and sort of realizing her place and stuff and it it was just yeah it was it was good to read because it was her taking her image back but at the same time, it was really yeah. tough to read because it was just like, she shouldn't have to say all this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. It's such a shame. It's like no one has learned anything since Ahmed Best yeah. with Jar Jar and things like that. Yeah. And, yeah. and sadly, I think it'll continue into the future with, with other... Well, I mean, it is right now. Look at... Look at um... Yeah. I, I, the stuff that's going on right now with um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, Wyatt Russell got harassed off social media just the other day. He deleted his, his social media accounts because people were. Uh... Oh, who does? I've not. I've not seen Falcon and Winter Soldier. Who does he? He he play? plays John Walker. He he. Uh, it, about spoilers. Yeah, he he plays John Walker in the show. Um, I think you can see it in trailers, but he's. Um, the the Captain America that the U.S. government gets to replace Steve, um, and All right. I think people are getting a bit I confused see. as to what a Which what a fictional the... character is, because they harassed him off social media for like being unlikable in the show. Yeah. Which is the point? It's, he's meant to be unlikable, and it's just like, <laughs> oh, for, like this is still yeah. going on. It's still going on. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, the way they sense each other, you kind of think, oh, are they related? But mm. nope, doesn't happen, which I'm fine with because yeah, yeah, I like the whole um, you come from nothing, you're nobody. It's a great way of saying even though you don't have an important name in the galaxy, you you can still be a hero. You can still do great things. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, and I I just love this this force connection thing force Skype as some people call it. Um, <laughs> um, it's really cool and it's it's this film does stuff with the force that we don't know about and I think that's really cool and a lot of people are sort of like oh the force can't do that that's mm. not how the force works but um I I I like how it deepens the mystery of it really. Yeah, and I also like Luke's line about. The Jedi. Um, mm. uh, he says, um, last time they're at the height of their powers, they allowed a Dark Lord of the Sith to take over, who was right in front of them. And I think yeah. it's a, it's an interesting message to su- to kind of suggest that um, maybe the Force should be left alone. Maybe no one should have it. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe yeah, the dark side shouldn't have. But maybe the Jedi shouldn't have it. Yeah, which is sort of... It's why I sort of thought at the time um, that they were building to doing Grey Jedi in um, Rise of Skywalker. Because I sort of thought that would mm-hmm. have been the logical place to take it. Like, the balance between light and dark. Yeah. Like, the Grey Jedi, right? And, I, and, like, looking at, like, the Clone Wars and stuff and the prequels where... It, they shine a light on how vain and you know the Jedi were and everything. I thought that's what they were building to, but um, mm-hmm. they didn't go that way. Yeah, maybe that's all about bringing balance to the Force. Yeah, um, no one should have it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And again, you said um, it teaches you, it tells you stuff about the Force you probably didn't know before. And yeah, Luke's saying, "What do you know about the Force? Um, it yeah. makes things float." <laughs> Congratulations, everything you said was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I really like the humor like, here as well when he, he um, reach <laughs> reach out and she literally does it and he starts yeah he starts tickling her. I love that. It shows that she's. I love it. Shows that she's not perfect she's, st- she's still got a way to go yeah yeah absolutely and it's funny as well it's genuinely like luke's just like oh for fuck's sake <laughs> that's great I must say, like, she's great in this film as a whole, but, like, there was a line delivery a minute ago that was that I've always thought of as, as being really bad. Um, it's when she comes out of the thing and goes, um, Master Skywalker, we need you because Kylo Ren and the First Order, blah, 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 and she's just saying it, like, blankly. 
Um, and I've always thought yeah. it was a slightly dodgy line delivery. Like, she's great in this, but it's just a... <laughs> I wonder if they had any other takes of that. Yeah, I think it would have been cool if, um, what if Rey was turning to the dark side in this? Like, maybe in this she was, um, she was seeing, you know, violence, uh, rage and anger. And that's, and maybe at, when Kylo Ren says, join me, she actually does that. And, you know, it ends with him as Emperor of the Galaxy and her yeah. being the apprentice. Yeah. Well, yeah, because she's drawn to it, isn't she? She's drawn to the, she's drawn immediately mm -hmm. to the dark, and um, yeah. Yeah, and I love that line. To say that it belongs to the Jedi is vanity. Yeah. They say if the Jedi dies, the light dies. It's vanity. Yeah, that's it's brilliant. Yeah, really well done. Yeah. Yeah, maybe people were expecting the um, Luke Skywalker to be more like in that uh, You're Welcome video. <laughs> Have no. you seen that? What's that? Basically, it's a, it came out before The Last Jedi, and um, uh, you know the song You're Welcome from Moana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, it's that, but someone's redone the lyrics to um, suit Luke Skywalker. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah say yeah it's a really great video saying um what can i say except you're welcome for that death star i blew from the sky <laughs> oh that's yeah. cool that is cool yeah well i mean that's the thing because like he says earlier in the film he goes oh what did you expect did you want me to come out there with a laser sword and take on the f entire first order myself and a lot mm -hmm. of people expect like hello hello greedo did a video it was like a parody video where he was like the last jedi should have gone this way and it's it's um a picture of luke with twin machine guns and giant swords on the back of his head and 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 like you know that's you know i think people were expecting just badass luke and it's more interesting to me to have this you know grumpy old man kind of morally skewed version mm -hmm. and then at the end you know he does yeah. face off the entire first order he does do that oh yeah so, you know you have your cake and eat it too mm -hmm. and it's kind of a whiplash with um uh, ray and finn because I always saw their friendship as like the emotional core of The Force Awakens, but yeah. they're not even together in this film. It's so odd. Yeah, yeah, and uh, a lot of people do sort of say this is the beginning of Finn getting sidelined, and I agree to a point, um, but I also think I, yeah, yeah, I also think a lot of that blame, most of it, is for the rise of Skywalker. I don't, I think in this film, it's very much because he, he is. Still... I'd say in this, yeah, he is given his own story and maybe yeah. maybe john boyega wanted to have i mean maybe he wanted to be more with the main cast maybe that's what more of the audience wanted i'm not sure yeah but i think he's done i think he's done all right here like the story he's given is good because finn does learn s something more about the first order's um brutality on the common people as well because obviously he was trained from birth and did they establish in Force Awakens that his mission on Jakku, that was his first uh, outing as a stormtrooper? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they stopped, yeah, for sure. And I, yeah, this is the thing, I think yeah, perhaps, the, you know, it's not the logical progression for his character, but at least he gets something to do in this. At least he's got a whole sort yeah. of side story. In, in Rise of Skywalker, he, get, he gets nothing to do. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think the majority yeah, of the Rise of Skywalker, Yeah, because Rise of Skywalker... Yeah, because Rise of Skywalker, despite the fact it's the film where they're all together, 
they're just so interchangeable. They literally could be anyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like all the development in the last two films just got thrown out the effing window. Yeah, it did, yeah, yeah. And this is cool. I like the I like Canto Bites visuals. I like the uh, different aliens that are in there that we've never seen before. Yeah. Mhm. I think it would have been cool if they put some ET aliens in. Here. Yeah, it would have been. <laughs> that that alien there, the the one that's like I told those two they can't park here. That's Joseph Gordon Levitt. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, I didn't know that's that. That's Gordon Levitt doing the voice, and uh, Mark Hamill voices the little alien who's um, trying to put coins in BB-8. Ah, okay. That's, that's his voice cameo for this one. Isn't Chris Rankin from Harry Potter in the background of this as well somewhere? I don't know. I, I'm sure I've seen him in it before. Because um, there are a lot of... Ca- this is this is the Canto Bite stuff is where Ryan Johnson really gets all his cameos in. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You know, really would have subverted our expectations if um, the code breaker was the I don't like you either guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, like in Rogue One, you know. <laughs> the yeah. code breaker was just, the, just you know, a guy who wanders around the universe going, watch yourself. You just watch yourself. He, he doesn't like he you. Doesn't like you. Oh. He don't like you either. <laughs> I will say as well, this is, I believe this is the longest Star Wars film, but it, it doesn't... It is, It yeah. doesn't feel like it to me. I don't think it feels that long. Or it definitely doesn't feel like as long as it does, at least. Now, I've just seen one of the kids there with the space horses, mm. and um, I'm sure one of those kids showed up at a Comic-Con once at LFC... LFCC one year. Oh, really? It was either 2018 or 2019, yeah. He had his own autograph table. Oh, nice. And um, I didn't recognise the name, but then I saw the picture and I was like, oh, yeah, Not it's that kid, yeah. kid with the broom from The Last Jedi. Broom boy, broom boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll call him that. Every, everyone calls him broom boy on the internet. Yeah, again with this, it just feels like um, yeah. I get they're trying to. I get maybe Ryan Johnson is trying to say this is the impact the First Order has on the whole galaxy and how people who come to this canti- ca- casino regularly thrive yeah. off of capitalism and things like that. And um, but yeah, it just feels as you said, it's like going to Switzerland just to get a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like, it's just a little bit too disconnected and disparate from everything else, I think. Um, and I don't, yeah. I don't have a problem with it, really. I have a big problem with it, but it is, like I said, it's the aspect of the film that I'm least, I, I, I don't jump to defend it as much as I do certain other aspects of this. Yeah. And at points like the, 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 the code breaker reveal looking like David Niven, or somebody, somebody like that. <laughs> oh, not now, lovey. I'm on a roll. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> it just feels a bit disconnected, really. <clears throat> now, remember in the trailer, this shot of Ray uh, practicing with the lightsaber. Everyone thought that one of the rocks to uh, to the left of her was Yoda, and it was Yoda sitting on a rock. <laughs> um, so they weren't they'll literally point out anything yeah yeah so you know it wasn't far off um, Yoda being in the film yeah. but it's just he's not in this bit
that just reminds me of that scene in Spider-Man 2, you know, when he's fixing the wheel, it falls off, and <laughs> you hear the guy go, Hey, you punk! You punk! <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, God. Put put the caretakers from this <laughs> in, in Spider-Man 2. <laughs> Yeah, I love things like this saying the legacy of the Jedi is failure. Yeah, yeah. And and yeah, it, again, it's it's almost it's almost like he's talking about the prequels because <laughs> he's just yeah. like now, now that they're over, their legacy is romanticized and uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. and yeah, it's almost like that. And it's a nice commentary on like yeah, you know, people aren't perfect and people have failed and the whole thing about this film that i find sort of so good is the whole thing is about people failing and people screwing up and then embracing that failure to become a better person i i just love that Mm -hmm. whole aspect Yeah, I like the idea that failure is the greatest teacher there is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I I think like the one of the my favorite lines in the saga is later on, um, when it's mm-hmm. Yoda says um, the greatest teacher failure is, and then he says uh, we are what they grow beyond. That's the burden of all masters. Like, what wow, incredible yeah. line! It's it's absolutely. Like, fully one of the lines of the saga Mm -hmm. which is why I get a bit annoyed when people go oh this was the moment that that revealed how much Ryan Johnson hated Luke uh, because Luke would never try and kill his grandson or whatever he doesn't, he doesn't, that's the point he doesn't try and kill his grandson yeah it was an (laughs) It was an impulse moment, and yeah. um, I mean, yeah, I mean, Luke has shown to lose his temper before and not think clearly. Obviously, in Return of the Jedi, when he nearly killed his own father. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and it, he he says it in the thing. He's like, it was a moment of weakness, and it was a moment of failure. And you know, he's never yeah. gonna do. Like, there's not in a million years he's ever gonna do it. But the point is, Ben saw that. That's the last thing that Ben saw. Yeah. That's the point of it. You're not supposed to think, oh, he was actually going to kill him. Because it's from... But... It's told from three... Three perspectives. Yeah, it's told from three different points of view yeah. because... Yeah, because the flashback we just saw, there's no lightsabers. It's just Luke going, Ben, no! Yeah. And then, obviously, when Kylo Ren tells it, it's Luke, you know, raising his <laughs> lightsabers if he's about to kill him. Yeah. But then I think with the last one, it's just him holding the lightsaber over him and then it's uh, Kylo Ren who makes the first attack. Yeah. The last one is is balanced. You know, again, balance. <laughs> powerful light, powerful Bring balance to the force. <laughs> and again, Kylo Ren says um, uh, later on, you're holding on to the past, let it go. We don't need Jedi. We don't need Sith. We can create a new order. Yeah. Yeah. And also, like, I know a lot of people take issue with the whole let the past die, kill it if you have to. Um, A lot of people take issue with that as uh, Kathleen Kennedy and Ryan Johnson wanting to destroy the legacy of the original trilogy. Right, Kylo Ren's the villain. No, it's not. (laughs) Kylo Ren's the villain, for (laughs) one. You're not supposed to take that as an absolute. I interpret that as we're not supposed to kill the past. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to move on from the past, but keep it with you and remember your failures. Whereas Kylo Ren's Mm -hmm. skewed point of view, he wants to kill it and forget about it forever. I think the film is trying to say what we should do is remember it, but don't rely on it. Keep it with you and and keep the failures with you to learn from their mistakes, but don't live in the past. Mm Mm-hmm. Benicio del Toro as, as as DJ. What a yeah. What a weird bit of casting. <laughs> yeah, it's just so. Uh, 
Yeah, the whole Codebreaker thing just doesn't sit right with me. It's just really weird. Yeah. Why does he have a stutter as well? Yeah, it's an odd performance. It's an odd, it's it's a bit it's a really odd <laughs> performance. Uh yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I've seen him in anything else, Benicio Benicio del Toro. Uh I've seen him in well he's in Marvel. He's the collector in uh Oh I he yeah, is, yeah. yeah. And he's, I remember that. And uh the other big thing I've seen him in is License to Kill. Oh, yeah, he is yeah, in that. Yeah, that, that was his first film role, I think. Ah, Because okay. he's really young in it. He, he looks really different. What would have made the casino more interesting is if um, Rose got a gambling problem <laughs> and then um, uh, Finn was looking for her, ripped the machine off and went, <laughs> Oh, but what is it? You can a bull Think before you say each word. <laughs> yeah, well, what would have, well, I think what would have improved this film tenfold is if they just, uh, in the middle of this, just put, uh, that entire episode just played it in full and then <laughs> turned to the film. <laughs> yeah. Would have improved it. Yeah. I think one of those aliens, one of those aliens, should have been like a gotta watch Wapner. Leave the table. Leave the table. No, do the card trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's that. I'm sure it's this kid here who was at Comic Con that one time. Yeah, I think I think it would be yeah, because he's he's an element yeah. that a lot of people were like, oh, we're gonna see, he's gonna be the new Luke. He, you know, we're gonna see him uh, <laughs> vote. And again, I just think his presence is meant to be an example of hope. It's meant to be showing that the resistance yeah. is spreading hope. And as long as there are good people in the world, and as long as there is hope, they will always win. Um. So all, yeah. although it... I can remember. Yeah, I can remember people saying, oh, is he going to be in Rise of Skywalker as a hero? Is he going yeah. to be another Jedi for Leia or Rey to train? Like, no, not really. He doesn't have to be. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking at the time, I was like, you're kind of missing the point. Like, the whole thing is, like, although the, although the Resistance are broken at the end, and although everything's screwed up yeah. and they have failed... The reason there's, you know, it ends on a note of hope because as long as there's good in the galaxy and as long as there is hope, you know, there will always be people who are going to fight. And yeah, that's, exactly. that's what he's there to represent, really. He's not there. He's not there to set up a whole trilogy. That alien that just screamed there just looks like a giant testicle. It does, yeah. <laughs> the hell is that design well interestingly the the scream that she does is actually a part of the score because if you watch the um oh. if you watch the score only version of the film there's no dialogue in it but except for that <laughs> so that's the only part in the score only version of the film where something happens like uh dialogue and it's just her screaming mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, and I'll say this about Ryan Johnson. I do love his IDGAF attitude to yeah. man babies and trolls that I don't give a fuck. I mean, he even... I mean, I kind of feel a bit bad for him, but um, he even saw that pathetic wig petition to remake The Last Jedi. Oh, fucking like, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm happy he's a good sport about it, but, oh, it's just... God, imagine if he... If that really upset him, but I suppose you do have to have a thick skin if you work 
in this business because it's well, not the kindest. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? But like, even like somebody asked him about all the trolls at an uh, at an event. It was like, how do you feel about all the sexism and racism around the film? And he was just like, fuck them. Yeah. That was it. That was all he all he said. Yes. Was, fuck them. <laughs> that's what we say. Fuck them. <laughs> But yeah, and like people were ri- people were ragging on him when Knives Out came out as well. People were giving bad reviews uh, to Knives Out because they were still pissed off about this two years later. It's just like Jesus <laughs> Christ, really? Yeah, like oh. I had to. It was the moment I unsubscribed from Jeremy Johns because his review of Knives Out was just basically Ryan Johnson isn't as clever as he thinks he is, and that shows in Star Wars. And it was just the the review was bad. Uh, it made me unsubscribe from him. I think because it was just like <sighs> I get it. You don't like the Last Jedi, but it's two years on. Move on. <laughs> yeah. Move on. I mean, I unsubscribed from him in 2017, but I can't remember the specific reason. I just think I was getting tired of his videos. I wasn't watching them anymore. Yeah. For, f- Nothing against the guy, personally. It's just yeah. not my cup of tea anymore. <laughs> for me, he, he started uploading videos that were like... Every Star Wars thing he mentioned was uh, was a dig at Kathleen Kennedy and J.J. Abrams, and one video he started going on about, oh, strong female characters don't matter unless you've got a good story, and, so, and it was just like, oh, for fuck's sake. <sighs> I, he, he sort of started to become, oh, yeah, he started to become one of those, and uh, it sort of made me go, oh, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I never remember when Rise of Skywalker came out. People were saying, because of The Last Jedi, I'm not going to see The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> right. Do you want a medal? Yeah, yeah. It's like, cool. Good for you. Probably should have see it there. And make my own. <laughs> I'm going to go see it and make my own judgment. Bye. I mean, fair play for the people who didn't go and see it because of this and were, and were like, yeah, I'm not supporting yeah. this. But it's the people who made a thing. It's, ma- yeah. it's the people who made a thing out of that. Like fair enough if you're not gonna, yeah. you know, if you're not gonna participate in something you don't enjoy. Fair enough, but like, don't, don't go. Oh, this is my stand against it, and like, come on, <laughs> just get over yourself. Yeah, you're not pro, you're not protesting for human rights. You're protesting for, you're protesting against space. A film about space wizards intended for children. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> now, um. <laughs> This became a meme. Kylo Ren without his shirt. Yeah, on. Ben Swolo. <laughs> <laughs> did he? Um, did it? Did it become a meme alongside Chungus? You know, yes. Bugs Bunny really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, it did. Chungus Skywalker. Chungus. <laughs> that'll hold up. Uh, that'll hold them all right. <laughs> that'll hold them all right. For <laughs> week. Uh. <laughs> I used to watch that cart. I've still got that cartoon on a Looney Tunes collection. I'm like, oh, I can't look at this the same way anymore. No, you can't. And I, it's just because it looks like a funny image because he's so massive. In it's, it's, yeah. the top part of his body, so huge, and it's just like. Mm-hmm. I remember I found a, an action figure in Poundland once, and it was a really crappy like ninja, but the way it had been sculpted. <laughs> it was just a massively heavy top half, and I was just like, "It's, it's Ben Swolo, the action figure." <laughs> it looked exactly like it. It looked exactly like the meme. Mm-hmm. But again, I I do kind of like how he walks around with his shirt off just to show, you know, he wants to be that all powerful person that um, Darth Vader was. Yeah, exactly. And again, we um, we did just see the um, uh, the second flashback, and yeah, I just realised that Luke, obviously from Kylo Ren's point of view, looks really evil. It's yeah, intimidating. It's, it's but obviously that's his perspective, which didn't really happen. It's impressive, like as a yeah, I, I think it's it's a wonderful bit of uh, acting from Mark Hamill. It shows he has a lot of range. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
god, I remember this criticism. How is Rey a perfect swimmer even though she's been on a sand planet all her life? <laughs> oh, uh, again, sake. it's just... Shut uh, up! Perfect. Again, it's just one of those things where it's like... And she's not a perfect swimmer, really. She actually look no, at... No, she just fell in and she, yeah. she fell in and got instantly back out again. Yeah. What are you moaning about? It'd be one thing if she, if, it'd be one thing if she was like swimming lengths of like a pool or something. Uh, I would sort of think, okay, maybe you've got a point there, but she gets in, flails around, and gets back out. It's just like yeah. clutching at straws for anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. Like, this sequence is nuts, though. I remember seeing this in the cinema and just sort of looking around me, and I think a lot of people were sort of going, the fuck is happening here? Like, <laughs> like it's just such a... It's an odd thing for Star Wars to do, but it's it's unique and cool. I, I like it a lot. Reminds me a lot of the um, Spider-Man Mysterio fight when uh, yeah. in Far From Home when he's doing all those illusions. It's just so surreal. It, yeah. it almost looked like it could be out of a comic panel. Oh yeah, hands down. Like that, that was the best thing about that film for sure. It was just was just. That whole sequence, and like this reminds me of that as well. Like you say, it's like it's so surreal. It's really different for Star Wars. Yeah. And I... What's this planet called? Have they ever given it a name that Luke's on? Oh, they have. I, uh, let me look it up because it's going to bug me. Because uh, <laughs> I can't quite remember. Yeah. It's. Oh. oh, for fuck's sake! I just typed in the Last Jedi Island into Google, and the first, <laughs> the first thing that came up when I typed in is was is not canon. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> uh, act two. That's what it's called. Oh, act two, yeah. That, yeah. And in real life, it's um, Skellig Michael, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. And this, this is, like, the whole thing of, like, Ra- you know, race parents are nobody... Uh, that was another one of the big controversial things, and um, yeah, <laughs> brave. I, I like that, um, you know, because it also connects to the, um, you know, broom boy at the end. Yeah, being like that, anyone who believes and has hope and faith can have the force, and anyone can be a hero. Yeah, exactly. Which I think is cool. Mm. I really like it a lot. But then, <laughs> yeah. But then. J.J. Abrams thinks he's being clever by saying, oh, well, her parents are nobody, but what about if I subvert your expectations and make it her grandparents? You're a Palpatine. Ah, <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, Jesus. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah. We can stop saying that after we've done stuff. I know, right? We'll, we'll get, get there. We'll get there. <laughs> she hits him as well and she's ready to sort of like yeah uh... and he was completely off guard for that yes yep yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm surprised Ray wasn't given a double bladed lightsaber because of the use of her staff that's a good point I've never thought about that that would have made that would yeah, be quite the logical usual suspect yeah the unusual suspect brought that point up uh, raise double blade. Double, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, that could have been cool, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and people take this whole thing as like he was going to kill his own grandson. He's not. That's it's, it. Really frustrates me when people say this. Yeah. It's one of the most frustrating. And people things. say, um, and people say, why did he talk to Yoda, Han Solo, or Leia about it? And again, well, he explains it here. He thought he could stop it, but yeah. Again, it was a moment of impulse. He he said he said he literally says the briefest moment of pure instinct. It yeah. passed like a fleeting shadow. You know, it, uh, he's ashamed of it. He's failed. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it was just wrong place, wrong time, because that's the last thing that he saw. Yeah. That's the last thing that Ben saw. And that's what matters. It doesn't matter. It, you know, him, him doing it doesn't matter. It's the fact that Ben saw it. And he wasn't ever going to do mm -hmm. it either. I wonder, was Ben, the name Ben Solo, is it named after Ben Kenobi, maybe? Uh, possibly, yeah. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like how he. Yeah, I get. I I understand some people thinking that him throwing the lightsaber over his shoulder at the start of the film is a bit too much, but I like it. It just feels Luke feels he's not worthy to hold his father's lightsaber anymore yeah. because he failed. Yeah. And again, as Ray was trying to pass it to him, and he's like, "No." Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I think I would sympathise a bit more with the complaints if he doesn't. If by the end of the film, he never goes back to how he was, but the whole point of that final yeah, battle is, yeah, the whole f point of that final battle is he becomes what everyone wants him to be. So that's yeah, why he gives the galaxy hope once again. Yeah, exactly. And it's why this all works uh... for me. I was happy that they brought back Yoda, and yeah. it's a brand new puppet, isn't yeah. it? And it's Frank Oz. Once again, puppeteering and voicing. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Funnily enough, I remember on on my th second viewing of this in the cinema, people laughed when he came onto screen. Like, um, people uh, over to the left were like laughing at how bad the effects were, which I think says a oh. lot about how accustomed the the public have gotten to seeing CGI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Says a lot. I love this whole. Se this is hands down like one of my favourite scenes in the saga. Like it's just stunning. I would have loved to have seen maybe you McGregor come back as Obi Wan just to yeah, just to tell him about yeah, maybe tell a similar thing to what Yoda did. Have both of his teachers yeah, uh, tell him that failure is the greatest teacher there is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, some people have seen um, Yoda burning down the temple as a metaphor for them, for <laughs> Disney destroying the, you know, the E, the extended universe, the is that what it's called? Yeah. You know, all those, all those books, video games, and comics that, yeah, took place after Return of the Jedi, and yeah, yeah I can see that a little bit. There. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just, yeah. Okay, one thing I don't get: if he's a ghost, how is he able to hit him? <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> magic. Minor nitpick, but I don't care. <laughs> but again, it's still establishing that Luke is flawed. Like the whole thing, like still looking to the yeah, horizon. Yeah, he still has stuff to learn. Yeah. And this this whole scene, I think, this really establishes that failure is the is the is the yeah. message of this film and the core of it is that failure is okay. 
Yeah. I imagine they uh, both catch fire now, and Yoda's like, what do you say we roll on the grass loop uh, <laughs> with you, Master Yoda? <laughs> <laughs> They've caught fire. Yeah, honestly, whenever I watch this, I'm just like, oh yeah, these are in it. Yeah, <laughs> these are still it in is it. It's disconnected, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because we Empire, you had two main stories that you were watching and that they converge at the end. Yeah. And this one kind of does as well, but it's kind of like free. Yeah, I kind of see um, a Ray's. Ray, Luke, Kylo Ren as the A story. This kind of feels like the Z story. Yeah. Like like the DLC you'd get in a video game. Well, I, I think... Which is a shame. I think I said at the time that it felt like I was watching an extended cut. I think I said that at the time. Yeah. It feels like... It feels like it's an extended version of the film with sequences added back in that were trimmed for very good reason. Yeah. That's what I think it feels like. Well, I think there's a deleted scene of, um, you know, after, you know, because it's early in the film, Luke says, where's Han? And I think they tell him that Han's dead, and I think he mourns for him, but for some reason they cut that out of the film. Yeah, I wish they'd have left that in. I really wish they'd have left that in. It would have been really, really nice. Mm-hmm. And this is what I don't think this necessarily is explored as well as it could be. Like the whole, oh, good guys, bad guys. Yeah. Good guys, bad guys. They're one and the same. Uh, I mm -hmm. feel like it scratches the surface of that, but never quite explores it in the way I think it wants to. Because it doesn't have the time to, really. That's really the crux of it. Yeah. Mm hmm. And I know a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't like the fact that this um, section of the film, this story with the resistance, is essentially nothing's happening apart from them following each other. But I'd mm -hmm. argue that it, that's kind of similar to Empire Strikes Back, because the the Han and Leia section of that film is literally them being followed by the Empire. Um, yeah. So it doesn't mm -hmm. bother me at all. No, the no, the chase doesn't really bother me too much either. No. You'll never make it through the night. Um, you're in space. There's no day and night. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what should have happened when Leia got um blown out of the spaceship superman should have shown up put her back in and be like you'll be safer doing the force in here <laughs> <laughs> like it's superman, superman 4, four yeah <laughs> and at first when i heard holdo's name i thought her name was Hodor, Hodor, who was a character in Game, who's a character in Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, <Rose>. yeah. She puts her hair down to go and face Kylo Ren. Yeah. What's that supposed to do? Impress him? Uh, it's, well, uh, <laughs> I, I, it's something for the Ray and Kylo shippers to to enjoy. Oh, yeah, Ray Lowe. Ray Lowe. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, Full Fat Videos did a whole video on them. That it's called, I think, Fifty Shades of Raylo. Of Raylo. <laughs> Which again, <laughs> they did kind of pander to in Rise of Skywalker. Oh, Although to be yeah. fair, I don't mind that. Uh, I don't. I, yeah. I've never had a problem with that. But yeah, it, 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 again, it's another one of those things where it strikes me as them. Uh, <laughs> so I think pander. um they've got. Because I think because hero and villain, they do have good chemistry. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, they're both fascinated by, by each other. Like, they want to stay away from each other, but they, they can't. can't. Yeah. You know, their destinies are intertwined. Yeah. It is, that's quite a nice. I like the sort of the momentary lapse in their shields allows them to pass through. It's quite a. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because obviously Holdo's angry that Finn and Rose are on the ship because of obviously of what she's going to do. But, um, yeah, that, you know, that whole side quest could have been avoided if you just told him you, if you did tell him your plan. And, you know, I get where they're coming from because, as said earlier, she just thinks that, um, Poe acts on impulse, doesn't think yeah, yeah. about the long-term consequence, but, yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like both of them are in the wrong, but the film seems to flip towards more Holdo completely being in the right when i think it should have been balance there's no right yeah, answer yeah. balance again <laughs> um, balance. i mean i do as things should be. <laughs> i i do like that it's um it's again poe fails and it's about him learning failure because like with every character in this film they fail and that's the point but yeah i know what you mean yeah Also, we just had one of the most Brian Johnson shots ever with the oh, yeah, <laughs> the, the iron. iron. <laughs> That's so good. That is so, like... <laughs> I remember laughing out loud when I saw that and nobody around me was laughing. And it was just because of the the ridiculousness of it. I love it. My kiss. <laughs> oh, and Adam Driver again. I, um, best. Yeah, he yeah, knocks it out. Absolutely. Of the park, this, yeah. this film, like he might be giving the performance of the saga. Dare I say? <laughs> oh like, yeah, he's it's just incredible. Yeah, he's brilliant. Just incredible. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Snoke's pimp house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ray. I almost expect him to be holding a martini <laughs> and having a cigar or something. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come join me, Ray. Once a pimp, I was a pimp. <laughs> I, re- I really like Rose's theme as well it's underrated yeah mm-hmm Like even something as simple as that just then with like BB-8 chucking the thing out at Finn, it could have been so easily to cut that <laughs> into multiple shots, right? Like it could have been so easy yeah. for that, but the fact that it's one continuous shot and it moves back and forth, there's so much energy to it. 
And it's, I just love how how energetic the camera work is. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> you can hear, you can see Laura Dern say "pew" when she shoots it. <laughs> Oh, you, yeah. can, you just look at her mic. Oh, the temptation is so there. Yeah, <laughs> and and like um, Ryan Johnson said before that she did that on every take, and initially he told her what, oh. and initially he was like, "Oh, what are you doing?" But um, when he told her not to, she it was like instinct. She couldn't do it. She couldn't not do it. <laughs> so it's just in the film. And he was like, "Yeah, fair enough." I mean, I read something recently about Stephen Burkoff in Doctor Who, The Power of Three. Oh. It, it does kind of sound similar to what Laura Dern did, but way worse, because apparently, yeah, oh. um, he, he, he deliberately um, not say his lines <laughs> the way the director wanted him to. He deliberately forget his lines. <laughs> and apparently it's why the climax to that episode feels so rushed and yes. you know kind of quick and yeah yeah for ages when i first saw the episode i was like that was a bit rushed what the hell happened there and then this whole revelation comes i was like oh yeah yeah that's what happened <laughs> that's and it's such a shame because that episode is really good, it is good. apart from the end yeah and i think that is the reason why i hope that we get new series in the collection box sets at some <laughs> point because i really like there's something went on there and we, I just want to find it. Mm-hmm. It's that episode and Orphan Fifty Five. I think are the t- are the yeah. are the two most obvious ones in the new series where you can tell like something went on here behind the scenes. Like this didn't. That this was a troubled production. Mm-hmm. This is a really nice seam to layer and hold though as well. I remember. Uh, <clears throat> when yeah. they both say when she says oh may the force be with you and Leia says oh I've said it enough it was just ah oh. it's re- again it's it's because of the real world uh, consequence yeah. like the real world stuff of obviously she was passed away by this point and it was just it's very emotional watching this yeah because yeah because so many people were theorizing oh is Leia going to die in this one so she can't be in episode yeah. nine so so they've written her out in episode nine efficiently but um. Yeah, it's it's the other way around. It's Luke who dies and yeah, Leia who stays. But yeah, such a tragedy. It is, and I wonder. I did. I, I think it would have been a lot different. I think episode nine would have been a lot different had she been uh, around to film it. Because did um did Colin Trevorrow's original script have a bigger role for Leia? Or I'm not sure. Was it written after she died? I'm assuming... I'm really not sure. I know that the original plan for the trilogy was episode 7 to be Han's film, which it did turn out to be. Episode 8 to be Luke's film. It did, yeah. Episode 8 to be Luke's film, which again, turned out to be. And episode 9 to be Leia's film. So each film was going to f- have like mm. a focus on each member of the original cast. But uh, obviously, yeah, real world circumstances meant that mm-hmm. couldn't happen, and that I think it would have been a lot different had had episode nine been Leia's film, because it because it really it was it, it was yeah. going to be, and it it should have been. It would have been a nice trilogy thing of of wrapping yeah. up the characters of each of the original cast, but mm-hmm. unfortunately, that's that's the way things went. I think we should actually, instead of talking about Snoke the Pin, we should just talk about uh, his role in the film. Uh, were you disappointed in any way when they killed him off and not, you know, revealed that he's a character from the extended universe or the original trilogy, something like uh, that? Not at all, because uh, the th- every reveal of this film, I was sat there in my seat like, holy shit, what is happening? Like, it... it, it each yeah. time it came as such a shock to me, uh, in a, in in the mm-hmm. best way, like in the absolute best way, it came as just such a <laughs> a complete shock, and I was just on the edge of my seat, like all the time. 
And I think that's why when a film gives me that level of investment, you know, I, I, mm-hmm. I, I can't dislike it really. You know, when when a film has you that invested that seemingly like the rest of the world kind of melts away and you're not really aware of your surroundings, you're just in the film. And that's what the, every big reveal of this film, that's what it had me like because I was literally on the edge of my seat going, what the hell's happening? This is insane. Like, I did not expect any of this. Uh, so... Yeah. yeah no, at the time, I was just like, "Oh shit, where's this going? What? This is so brave and unexpected." And uh, yeah, I'll I'll admit, in hindsight, um, when the film ended, I was saying to my friends, "Hey, what if Snoke's a clone? What if that's not the end?" Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that was partly true. <laughs> yeah. Um, but him being Palpatine's creation. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not against. I'm not against it, to be honest, because, um, yeah, if Palpatine could, if Jango Fett could clone himself in Attack of the Clones, nothing, no, no, nothing to say that Palpatine could do it, yeah. and of course, yeah, I just think, um, obviously it's a Rise of Skywalker problem, there should have been more explanation, maybe just, because they literally say in the film, somehow, Palpatine survived, you could have said... Yeah. You could have said with the using the dark side of the force, he found a way to create life. Yeah. What What if it was that? That would have been a reasonable uh, explanation. Would have been so easy. Not somehow. Yeah. <laughs> would have been so easy just to include. And it's like the fact that they put Palpatine's message in Fortnite. You could only listen to Palpatine's message, which is key to the story of that film. You could only listen to it if you yeah. played the Fortnite expansion that was released alongside it. Oh, if God. you beat the Fortnite expansion, uh, you, the, the reward was getting to hear the message. Ho- when mm-hmm. has that ever happened? That <laughs> that yeah. that would be like that would be like if in Avengers Endgame, you you put <laughs> the five year time jump in Fortnite, and that was the only explanation they ever gave for it. Mhm. Yeah. And um. You know, it's amazing how there is kind of a double standard with the prequels and the sequels. People will pick apart plot holes and say it's objectively bad with the sequels, yeah. but they will constantly make excuses yeah. for the prequels yeah. when it's never stated what happens. For example, they'll say, um, oh, in Revenge of the Sith, Palpatine was sucking the life force out of Padme to keep Anakin alive. Yeah. That's never explained in the ne- film. Yeah. It's never stated, and now you're just making up an excuse. Yeah, ne- never. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, it's it, it's frustrating because if you're willing to forgive the flaws in the filmmaking and the prequels because you enjoy them, which is fair enough, mm-hmm. absolutely. I yeah. I do that to an extent. Um, you know, if if you're willing to do that, why aren't you willing to do it with the sequels? Why aren't you? Why are you picking apart the sequels for these supposed flaws in the filmmaking? Mm-hmm. That I I just don't get it. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Mm-hmm. In a minute, we get the first like proper swear word of the saga, right? Doesn't Finn say you treacherous bastard? Oh yeah, he's... that 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 shocked me as well. Same. Damn. <laughs> They don't swear, it's Star Wars. Yeah. Which, well, to be fair, I think in America, yeah. like, hell is considered a swear word, isn't it? And and damn. And they say yeah. that in the original. Well, um, uh, well, it's like censorship on Family Guy, because oh, yeah. when BBC Free was a thing, they used to show Family Guy, and they'd obviously show the censored versions. Yeah. They, uh, apparently, apparently they'd censor Butthole as well. For fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, because... Uh, it, funnily enough, it's in a Star Wars parody. You know when um, Carter's the Emperor is electrocuting Luke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, obviously he's doing that whole, yeah, I'm a bad guy, yeah, <laughs> look at that, yeah, look, woo, coming at you from the side, yeah, up a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> they bleep out butthole like, oh, f- oh my really? god, how how old do you think the audience is, free? <laughs> <laughs> oh... Yeah, you can't say "god damn" either. <laughs> yeah, "god damn"'s a big one. It's like in in the UK we're very uh, uh, lenient on like "god damn" and "hell," but in America it's quite it's yeah. quite. Mhm. I mean, I can understand words like the F word, yeah. but 
Uh, well, I think it's stupid. it's religious connotations, isn't it? With like goddamn and hell. That's why people so, get yeah. yeah. Oh, they can't. Um, they can't say queer as well. But can they not? No, because oh, I remember. Right. I think it's the episode where Peter's convinced to give up alcohol. He sees um, what his life would be like if he never touched alcohol. He sees Peter as being like an upbeat guy, being like, Meg, back to the hug. Uh, Chris, handshake. And Peter, in the TV version, he says, who the hell is this jerk? And in the DVD, I think he says, who the fuck is this queer? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's weird, isn't it? It's just... But, but... I mean, I can understand queer because it, could, it can be a homosexual slur. It can be, yeah. Although I think in recent years, yeah, I can get in that. recent years, that's been taken back by the community. I think, Cause, oh, okay. well, because the Q in LGBTQ. Yeah, of yeah. course. Mm-hmm. If anyone, like anyone, if we're wrong on that, please correct us. Yeah, please do. <laughs> but yeah, fuck me. We're straight white males. We know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, geez, this fight is so cool. Yeah, I oh, love it. Um, yeah. And I love the final... I love it when, I think, Rafe... Yeah, there it is. You murdering bastard! <laughs> like, wow! Yeah, it's pretty... It's pretty... Yeah, you murdering bastard, yeah. Watch the potty mouth. <laughs> it's like in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I was surprised <laughs> when Ron said, pissed off. <laughs> I don't even think that's in the book. <laughs> it's not in the book. Did J.K. Rowling ever write? Ever write? Ron told Harry to piss off. <laughs> no. Uh. But yeah, no, that's what I mean, I mean about being on the edge of my seat. I just remember like um, Snoke being cut in half and just being like, "What the fuck?" Ray catching the lightsaber yeah. and the Force theme blaring out. I was just mm. like. Oh my god! Like they're gonna, uh, they're gonna fight together. Like it was just such a a moment of just pure hype, and I was just so into it. And uh, yeah, because yeah. it's like, um, it's like Kylo Ren realizing his full potential. Because when when Darth Vader killed the Emperor, it wasn't Vader doing that; it was Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. But here, it's pure Kylo Ren. He does it to seize power, not to say, "Oh, I'm gonna turn to the light side." <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, another moment like that was later on when Luke uh, gets, seemingly gets shot and steps out of the, the smoke. Yeah, fuck, man. Like, I was literally just sat there, like, so into it. And that's really the the the, the power that this film has, really. And I'm still like that. Like, I've seen it, like, six times at this point, probably more. Uh, but I just, <laughs> it still is just so engaging and so thrilling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I love this final yeah. move here. She throws in the lightsaber. He simply just turns it on, and it goes oh, through yeah. the guard's head. That's wow. He like turns it on and off really quickly, and you just see a hole. Just all of this just feels so well thought out and well plotted. Yeah, because Ray. Yeah, because Ray now thinks that oh, he's killed Snoke, so Ben is obviously turned to the good. Yeah, uh, to the light side, but nope, he's he's probably worse than ever before because yeah. he's like, let the past die, Skywalker, the Sith, Jedi, Rebels. It's all a lie. Let it die. Yeah, it's brilliant. And we're 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 an hour and. 50 minutes into this film it it's flown by yeah. it's flown by it really does it, it really yeah. is it just it does fly it's by. a very well paced film it is yeah whereas something like attack of the clones which is shorter than this you know go back go back <laughs> and listen to our commentary for that half of that is us going fucking hell is this still going on <laughs> whereas this yep. this one is just it, it really does fly by yeah as much as I like the Battle of Kray, I think it would have been so cool if they ended it here, you know, yeah. saying, join me, and it just cuts to the credit and someone like, oh, Cliffhanger, what yeah. Now? <laughs> yeah. 
And the funny thing is, it's uh, this is quite rare for a Star Wars film, but it takes place immediately after the last film. Whereas yeah. if you go back and watch a lot of the others, they take place like a year or or sometimes ten years after the last yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, Rise of Skywalker, right? Like, Rise of Skywalker is is, is a good... What's it, like... It's a, a year, year, isn't yeah. it? I think so, yeah. I'd love to see... I, they haven't done this yet. I'd love to see some some uh, some stories filling in that gap. Like, some... Yeah, that could be I, cool. I don't know if they've done that yet. Maybe a TV series, Yeah, too. yeah. Yeah. Right, okay, okay, so we're getting now. <laughs> we are getting yeah. to one of the most stunning like few shots of the whole franchise and one of the just most impactful moments where it was just like this is epic and also the source yeah. of one of the stupidest complaints i've ever seen for a film and like this isn't mm-hmm. like i'm you know fair enough i know a lot of people who don't like this film that's absolutely fine but this yeah. whole thing with the holdo maneuver <laughs> <laughs> when people go like it breaks canon because why didn't they just they just do this whenever they're in a jam right <laughs> yeah <laughs> one it's literally a suicide bomb <laughs> hey yeah it clearly kills it her, kills her and it obliterates the space yeah ship. yeah so, so 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 how are you gonna get crews together to knowingly kill themselves how are you gonna advertise that as a job <laughs> two it's a big expensive ship somebody's got to pay for that thing they're not just gonna every single <laughs> battle go oh just ram into them and kill all the fleet <laughs> it is yeah. one of the stupidest complaints i think i've ever seen i don't understand mm-hmm. why people have such like people are like it breaks canon it's just so dumb <laughs> Yeah, I just... Uh, I'll go get the big book of light speed to yeah. tell me how this really should happen. Uh, I don't care. And they know what... The, it's it's played as, holy shit, what is she doing? This is risky as shit. It's yeah. played as a big thing where it's like, oh my god, none of, nobody knows if this is going to work. This is just... It's literally like crashing a plane into another plane. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The idea, the idea that people are like, uh, "Oh, why don't they do this all the time?" It's baffling, <laughs> so baffling. Yeah. Having said that, it's a gorgeous scene. <laughs> yeah. If the sound's gone off, don't worry, it's the film. <laughs> it's just, just what I put a warning. It's just stunning. I think. Um, oh God, I could be wrong, but I think in. Um, when they sold the film Inception to other countries, they actually put on symbols or they put on writing, letting the viewer know which dream they were in, Holy apparently. shit, really? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah apparently it'd say, <laughs> when they were in um, the car, uh, in the rainy street, it'd say, Dream 1, at the <laughs> hotel, I think is the next one. Dream 2, uh, the snowy mountain. Dream 3. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That yeah, is insane. Apparently, yeah, when it was sold to some foreign countries. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's a deleted scene, isn't there, where um doesn't Finn bring up Starkiller Base? Yeah, uh, yeah, there's quite an extensive deleted scene involving Phasma. Yeah. Personally I would have um I would have saved her for the last film for her to be in the last film. Again, have her be Finn's nemesis yeah, throughout this song, yeah. throughout this trilogy. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. Just think it was a bit too too. It is a shame they killed her off. Yeah, it's satisfying. I like how her armor's stronger. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, yeah, it's really cool. And uh, well, I think it would have been more satisfying her death if she was the stormtrooper in Force Awakens who was going traitor. Oh yeah, and yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Chrome Dome, that's a bit... That's just lame. (laughs) (laughs) Well, again, it this actually it does bring me back to my point where I think the last Jedi could be a good ending to the series 
because Phasma, Phasma's yeah. dead. Uh, you know, it's really satisfying. It ends on a note of hope, and I feel like satisfied, like it's a satisfying conclusion. Um, and yeah. It's just, yeah, it just it genuinely feels like a good ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've never liked that rebel scum line. Really? You were always scum. Rebel. No, I don't like oh. it. It's just a bit too. I guess it's supposed to be cheesy, yeah. but it just it just feels like it's trying too hard to be bad <laughs> but it's really not. I don't like it. I'm not yeah, a big fan. I don't mind it. I think it's kind of cool. It, it just sort of... It, it just feels like Finn's arc is sort of wrapping up again. Like, is this the last film? Like, yeah. It just, I, yeah. Yeah, because as the First Order explodes around him... He's the one who comes up triumphant, yeah. literally, when he's on that um, lift thingy. <laughs> now, Hooks would have killed Kylo Ren here had he had the chance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he could still have done it, because Kylo Ren's still on the floor defenceless. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was going to die. I thought Hux was going to die Yeah. when I first watched it. Yeah. I thought, like, at this point, I was like, the way this film's going, I don't know what's going to happen. He could die at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it probably would have been better if he had, to be honest. <laughs> some say... Uh, yeah, I've heard some people argue they made him too much of a punching bag in this film, but I don't know. Oh, His yeah. entire personality, Hux, is... It's basically an angry little boy saying, I demand to be taken seriously. Exactly, yeah, the whole thing is... He... But no one will. Exactly, yeah, he, he's, he's pathetic. Yeah. He's a pathetic individual. <laughs> and I really like that. Yeah. That's... Yeah, I hate how... Yeah, I hate how they make him the spy in Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, yeah he's pathetic, not... Not a guy who was good all yeah. along. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, great! This is one of this is one of my favourite battles oh, in Battlefront Two. It, oh, it, yeah, absolutely. Mhm. I love the moment where um Rose steps out of the thing and she goes, "This is all that's left." Like she's she's just so <laughs> taken like taken aback by it. It's just it, it it's got. I love that, him rubbing BB-8 like a yeah, dog. Yeah, it's so nice. It's really nice. <laughs> here, buddy. It establishes their relationship's really yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah, this whole last act has got... The, uh, there's a certain tone that I really love when uh, when things are just so hopeless but full of hope at the same time. Like, it's just got that whole yeah. tone to... I think it might be like... Because I'm a known <laughs> defender of something like Spider-Man 3, because that's got a similar tone where it's like mm -hmm. towards the end of Spider-Man 3, everything's just hopeless, but there's it ends with a bit of hope. Yeah. And I've always sort of loved that because I, I just think it's it's so it's so doom laden in this, but that you just want everyone to win, and uh, it's just yeah. And I do like um, what Poe has learned here because he's not acting on impulse or acting solo because he thinks he's the cool yeah. guy. He's um, coordinating things. He's listening to people like a true leader should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, again, 
Finn is not running away here. He's like, we've got to stand yeah. and fight. That's what I like as I well. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And later on where he's like, no, I won't let them win. I'm not backing down. Mm. Yeah, I do like this as well, yeah. Oh, here it comes. The so, yeah, the, the guy next to him <laughs> is Gareth Edwards. <laughs> That's yeah, it, yeah. Oh, Edwards. gee, thanks for that. <laughs> Oh, God, I remember Honest Trailers. When they did this film, they said, The Star Wars friend, the Star Wars fandom in a nutshell. Salt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Salt. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, Edgar Wright's in this somewhere, isn't he? He's one of the resistance officers. Yeah, who, according to Edgar Wright himself, he did not He survive. didn't live, yeah. <laughs> What, like, how visually excellent. Resistance Trooper 3, a Star Wars story. <laughs> Please, give Edgar Wright, yeah. Yeah. How visually good is this, though? Like, this is incredible. Like, the, the pure white and just the red sticking up, like, yeah. blood almost. Like, it's so... Red is the colour of this film, and I yeah. love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so good. Like, again, like... They have no... Yeah, I love that. Yeah, they have no reason to be It's great to play on Battlefront 2 as well. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, Battlefront 2 is is gorgeous when when you shoot the floor and just the red comes up, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And just like this, at the time, I was just so invested in this because, like, they have no reason to be hopeful here. They're they're little tiny mining ships going up against these massive AT-80s. You know, they're screwed, but the fact that they're keeping keeping on fighting, and I just find it so sort of uplifting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I suppose um, it's a little bit... I suppose Rise of Skywalker is kind of the antithesis of this climax because, you know, it's a small group of rebels, but then... In Rise of Skywalker, they rally the whole of the galaxy yeah. to come help. Them. Yeah, I like that parallel. Yeah. I do like that parallel. Mm-hmm. And I remember actually when the Millennium Falcon comes in, my friend grabbed me in the cinema and went, "Fuck yeah!" Like we were just like, <laughs> "Yeah," because <laughs> we it's so satisfying, and it feels like a finale. It really does feel like the last stand almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as you said, it feels like the final. It does. Star Wars it really film. does. When all hopes lost, that you know they 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 yeah just. <laughs> Even the porgs are there. <laughs> Honestly, the only other cinema um experience where I think we me and my friends had like that visceral reaction and really for this one it was just me like my friend just piped in on that one moment but I think it it, com- it compares yeah. to Endgame really um because in, en- in Endgame oh, yeah. when they all came through the portals like everyone I was with I was in quite a big group of like seven or eight of us and we all just like looked at each other down the row all smiled and just went fuck yeah like just got yeah. so hyped up by it yeah, because I remember when um, it's because I didn't quite hear it when it happened when the um, when Falcon says Cap, you read me or Cap heads up. So yeah, like yeah. That. I was like, wait, wait, what? Yeah. I thought that sounded like Falcon. It is Falcon. <laughs> They're back. Oh, just like tears of joy. <laughs> that that I remember that became a meme because um, <laughs> so many people were saying, I wonder. If, I wonder if Falcon was saying, hey, Doctor Strange, when you bring us all back, can you bring me <laughs> on, on Cap's <laughs> yes, left? <laughs> I want to make that joke. Yeah. <laughs> I love the practical porgs being flung around the, the Millennium Falcon here. Yeah. This is classic Star Wars, like the, mm-hmm. the Death Star attack theme. The dun, 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 Like, it's yeah. classic Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I like that Luffy gives yeah. hooks like like excuse me who's in charge yeah, it's subtle humour like I, I like that yeah <laughs> yeah I, I love the bit later as well when um he's like uh, 
all firepower on that man and uh, the dust sort of settles and Hux just goes, do you think you got him? <laughs> <laughs> Hux is kind of like when Homer became Mr. Burns' assistant. <laughs> Constantly getting berated. Hux, lie down! <laughs> Sorry, but you need a good night's rest. Oh, Hux! <laughs> my, my hologram's been ringing for some time. <laughs> Answer it. This Hux fellow seems to be getting dumber by the minute. <laughs> Here are your messages, Snoke. You have 30 minutes to move your speeder. You have 10 minutes. Your speeder has been impounded. Your speeder has been crushed into a cube. You have 15 minutes to move your cube. <laughs> Hello, Hux. Snoke's office. Is it about my cube? <laughs> ah, those, um... Those crystal... Foxes? As, what are they called? Uh, in the film, the characters say Crystal Critters, but that's clearly a nickname. That oh. is like a nickname. For, they do yeah. have a species name on Wikipedia, I'm sure. <laughs> they were CGI, or did they actually get a real dog and uh, model it after that? I think that? they're CGI, because they're like crystallized. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But they're very cool. They're like something out of an anime or something. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> So, yeah, this, I remember, like, and it, I, I think it still kind of gets to me now, like, with the way the world went, like, last year. This whole bit of, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's flawed, like, the whole kiss and everything. But I love the whole, look, that's how we're going to win, not by fighting what we hate, but by saving what we love. And Finn's persistence there of, yeah. like, no, I won't let them win. We cannot let them win. Um, I, yeah. I... Ah, I um just it really because in 2017 it was mm -hmm. we were one year into the Trump presidency and I just remember thinking at the time fuck <laughs> this it just feels so relevant and I think the way the world went last year well, I can remember yeah. I can remember people using this this line the dialogue and saying well that's wrong because and using like a clip of Luke Skywalker blowing up the <laughs> Death Star to show how wrong they are yeah but <laughs> yeah, but if you go back, Luke wasn't exactly saying, I'm angry, I'm going to do this because I fucking hate you, yeah. or something like that. He was he was still protecting what he loves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. He was still protecting the galaxy. He wasn't doing it out of complete yeah, malice. Yeah, exactly. And, it's, it's... and people who say that, they seem to miss um, Yoda's teaching. A Jedi uses the force for knowledge and defense, never, never for, attack. for attack. Yeah, it's completely in line. It's completely in line with it. And, uh, yeah. uh, yeah, I just, it really, it, real world events. Oh, I love this. Impacted it. Uh, yeah. Oh, I love this bit, yeah. We've, uh, yeah, no one's coming. We... It's over. And Luke Skywalker comes in. Because I know Mark Hamill did say, um, at the end of The Force Awakens, it should have been Luke Skywalker who grabs the lightsaber and saves the day against Kylo yeah. Ren. But, um, he kind of gets his wish here. I just he absolutely realized. does, and like that line, like "Oh, we fought till the end, but the galaxy has lost all its hope." It's so cathartic yeah. when Luke Luke is the symbol of hope, and it's why I sort of like Mark Hamill tweeted about like, "Oh, I miss when I miss playing Luke when he was a symbol of hope." Um, yeah, he becomes the symbol of hope here. Like this is him becoming that symbol of hope again, literally. It's and and people are telling yeah. stories about his sacrifice, and that's what he did for the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's brilliant. And this dialogue's wonderful. Like the whole oh, I changed my hair. <laughs> it's yeah. just really nice. Mm -hmm. And did did you think something was up when you saw him with short hair and dyed hair and and all that? Did you sort of twig or? A little bit, yeah. I just didn't. I didn't catch on that he was a projection, a false yeah, projection. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think at, at the time I was sort of like, oh, that's. As he just kind of cut his hair and and dyed it, and they just didn't show it. I sort of brushed it off, but. Yeah. I didn't know what was happening really, because when uh, like when he steps out of the the fight of the, all the blaster beams and everything, I was just like, holy shit, what is happening? What's going on? Like, it's really well done. Yeah. And that's say later on uh what we're about to see you know luke go up against luke being all calm 
uh, not a, and you know just defending himself against Kylo Ren when it's necessary and Kylo Ren being like show them or yeah. just raging at yeah. him that's kind of a metaphor for how divided <laughs> this film is Absolutely. you've got the people who make their career out of destroying this film and being like show that yeah. something like that and you've got People like us who like this film and we're just pretty calm about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm not... I mean, it's almost like... A... Yeah. <laughs> and it's um, it's a bit like Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bugs Bunny will just react calmly, nonchalantly, while you just hear uh, the other side going, ah, Shut him now! Shut him now! <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I I love this film, but I, and I'm very passionate about it. But I'm certainly not one of those people who are like, yeah. I'm dedicating my whole life to the Last Jedi now or something. Like, I'm not going like, oh yeah, I'm not going to be like a mm-hmm. like you see like Zack Snyder fans who are like, their entire online personality yeah. is based around Snyder's films. And yeah, fair mm-hmm. enough. But it's yeah, well, yeah, I'm not. I'm not that. I'm not. I, I have many friends who don't like it, and I'm I'm definitely not. Going out, oh, going yeah, after course. them all the time, <laughs> saying, why don't you like it? I mean, one of my closest friends said his favourite set of Star Wars films is the sequel trilogy, and I'm like... Oh, oh yeah, cool. yeah, fair enough. Well, I mean, that'll yeah. become quite common. We haven't become bitter enemies. <laughs> well, that'll become yeah. quite common in the future, I think, as as the generation that grew up with it grows up, really. Yeah, it might do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do like how there's not a scratch on him, but I, I could have done without him, you know, oh, flicking, flicking his shoulder. Flicking his I think shoulder. that's a bit. Yeah. I think that's a bit too much. I get, did I hear somewhere that was Mark Hamill's idea? I think I might have heard somewhere that it. Oh, it, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it I know been. it was. It was somebody's. It wasn't in the original script. That bit with um three PO. Yeah. Um, when he walks past three PO mm-hmm. and he goes, Master Luke. Like that wasn't in the original script. Somebody thought of that on set, I think, on the day. I don't know who it was, but. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just remember seeing that, like this moment in particular. It was just this perfect mix of emotions of just confusion and shock. And yeah, just... just him stepping out of the. Yeah. Whew. And I love how all the redness kind of represents all the rage of the dark side going at him, but it doesn't yeah. put a scratch on yeah. him. Hooks is another <laughs> Don't construct our goal. Uh, and then the, the, uh, the, the guy, the guy uh. in the cop is just like, right away, sir. <laughs> Doesn't question it. This gets so good. Plus, I like how their blades don't clash either. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And again, goes back to the whole idea of the Jedi using it, the force for knowledge and defense. Mm. Um, Luke only defends himself and attacks when it's absolutely necessary. Yeah. He only dodges his um, attacks. He doesn't try to... Uh, I, I'm sure he doesn't try to like push Kylo back with the force or use anything against him. No, yeah, it's yeah. It's defense only, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, such a cool shot with those two. Oh, it is, it's yeah. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. And I... It's on the back. Oh, yes, it is, yeah. It's on the back of the Blu-ray cover, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I'm glad they used it. What's brilliant as well is if you look at at, um, at the floor, uh, you can see that Luke's... He doesn't leave any footprints. He doesn't... Yeah, so it's a hint that it's, it's just a projection. Yeah, a hint towards what's actually happening. Yeah, of course, and again, Poe is being a um, a strong leader here by saying, "No, we don't. We don't go out there and fight. We've got to. We can't risk everything. We've got to escape and run because there will be hope." Yeah, yeah. He's lit the fire of hope, and the f- hope is blossoming into a exactly, fire. Exactly. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Where'd the crystal critters go? Oh, and people take issue with that as well because apparently it's too silly for Star Wars. Because <laughs> of course people do. <sighs> yeah. It's like when Rogue One came out, so many of those man babies were saying, Star Wars finally gets adult! Oh, like, yeah, it's like, you, you, do away, you, ha- you do away, you have been watching fantasy films <laughs> for the past 40 odd years. Oh, and yeah, like, I love the parallel earlier. She was like, oh, lifting rocks. Uh, and and now she's literally lifting mm-hmm. rocks. <laughs> she's literally lifting yeah. rocks to get them out of there. Mm-hmm. It's so well, to, like, keeping track of the, the footprints on the, on the salt and everything. It's so well, so yeah. well done. And this what and I you know I said it earlier I don't uh, people people get so angry that Luke wasn't the real Luke Skywalker in this and I'm just like he he is at the end that's the point he rediscovers himself right at yeah. the end and that he he you get to have your mm-hmm. cake and eat it too and just yeah yeah mm-hmm. and he's even force projecting himself to look younger than he actually is so you can have you can yeah you can <laughs> yeah he is. <laughs> It's even further added to that. Yeah, because he could have shown up in person. Maybe just have him block all those. You know, maybe just hold against those um, lasers that are firing yeah. on him. But um, but then again, it does come to the issue. Well, if that doesn't kill him, and I don't know, Kylo Ren stabbing him out of anger kills him. Yeah, yeah it could have come to that issue, but. Um, that's the problem, yeah. Ah, he said it, the last Jedi. <laughs> oh, so that's why they call it that. Uh, Ray in the next film. The only way for me to solve this crisis is to become the rise of Skywalker. <laughs> oh, so that's why they call it that. <laughs> well, actually, one thing I do love about the sequel trilogy titles is if you say them together, it, it does create a sentence. <laughs> the Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, it does yeah. create a sentence. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And it never occurs to me that uh, Ray and Poe haven't actually met mm-hmm. yet. Because <laughs> no, they, they meet haven't. <laughs> at the end, um, they approach each other. It's like, hi, I'm Poe. <laughs> it's just like, oh, oh yeah, they haven't yeah. actually met yet. Yeah. It never occurred to me really before. Mm-hmm. Just the way the score just takes over, it's it's so good. It is really yeah. brilliant. I'm yeah. always Every time I watch this, I'm just so like impressed by how well constructed it is and how everything comes together. Mm-hmm. And what do you think to his last words? See you around, See you around kid. kid. I I love it. <laughs> I really love it. <laughs> yeah, it's like saying, no matter what you do, you won't it's win. So, yeah, it's like, like taunting him, but not. Not yeah. yeah, not in an aggressive way. It's just it's it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think it. I do think it was appropriate for Luke to be killed off in this oh, film yeah. because, as you said, it does feel like his it's film. It's his film, yeah. Kind of like how, you know, Han came back a bit more of a changed man, someone who did believe in the Force a lot more. 
realised all of it was true and it ki- he's killed off at the yeah, end. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I love Luke's death scene here. I think it's uh, it is so brilliantly done. And Mark Hamill just acts the hell out of this. He's so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I it's a lot of, there was a lot of debate around this actually like does the planet have twin suns or is he just seeing the the binary suns? Mm-hmm. And I like to think it's just him seeing them as he goes like that's the thing that inspired him to start this journey. And uh and they, Yeah, and it's the last thing he sees. Yeah. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, just so many gorgeous oh, shots stunning. there. Stunning. Uh, I thought the film was ending at this yeah. point when I first saw it. I thought the force theme was building up and it was going to cut to credits. Mm-hmm. I had that as my um, foam wallpaper for so long of like Luke sat sat on the rock mm-hmm. looking at the. And even the cloak blows yeah, away. It's really powerful yeah. imagery. It's really good. And I do like that. I like that cut cut away to um, uh, yeah, the symbol he was showing Ray early about the Jedi, as if to suggest yeah, the sun has set on the Jedi. It's time for a new beacon of hope yeah. to be in the galaxy. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it it sucks that the third one was just kind of. So, so Park, because I remember yeah. every little element of this ending was so tantalising, like that final shot of Hux, of him just looking at Kylo Ren. Mm-hmm. So, like, oh, where are they going to go with that? Oh, Ky- you know, they've all been split up now. Luke's gone. What, what, what? Where are they going to go from here? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. Kylo Ren and Ray, they're still sensing each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. As they leave, basically. Yeah. yeah. And she literally closes the door on him. She literally says, that "I'm done." <laughs> And just like all of them, like embracing each other and sort of hugging each other, and that, like, in spite of everything that's just gone on, <laughs> it just feels very, mm-hmm. yeah. I like the tone this strikes. Yeah, I mean, there's a problem with Rise of Skywalker. Um, there's, what, about 20 Resistance members here by Rise of Skywalker? Oh, they've got a full army and fleet yeah, again. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing. I was so excited uh... at the end of this to sort of see, like, you know, Leia says, oh, we have everything we need. I was excited to see where they mm-hmm. would go from here, but unfortunately, it's because it, of the time skip, it just... That's kind of what I want. I want to see a TV yeah. series that... Or, or something that fills that gap because I think it could be really interesting yeah definitely and just this nice little coda of the kids as well like saying that the story of the Skywalkers and Luke Skywalker's sacrifice will live on and inspire hope across the galaxy and that's the point of this ending and again it's like so many um particularly us kids how many times were we playing with action figures yeah. lightsabers pretending to be the heroes we aspire to be and yeah exactly it's, it's really cool to see that in an actual film but not kind of in a pampering yeah. way but yeah in a way that serves the story that it gives people yeah, and, and hey like again yeah. if this had been the last one you know start off in 1977 with um with 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 a farm boy looking up at the sky and dreaming of adventure, and ending with a kid looking up at the sky and and hoping for adventure and hope and dreaming of adventure, yeah. It's just it's that mm-hmm. it's it's telling the audience that, that story will go on forever, I think, and it's a wonderful ending to it. And um, I just I think mm-hmm. it's a stunning film. <laughs> it really and it gets better every time yeah. I see it. 
yeah, it does with me as well, because I remember watching it in the cinema, you know, I saw quite a few uh, reactions to it. Um, obviously, they were quite re- reasonable, saying, you know, oh, I didn't like it because of yeah, this, that, yeah. and the other, and I thought, oh, okay, have I, have I missed something here? But, you know, every time I watch it, I notice something new, and that's... Yeah. It's not perfect, but it's definitely... Yeah, it's not worth getting worked up no, about. No, no. I... I mean, it's, it's completely fine if you don't like it, that's fine. Yeah. But um, if you think it's the worst movie ever made, maybe have a bit of perspective. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I should probably say, because I've been quite <laughs> passionately defending it in this, I should probably say that, you know, if you yeah. don't like it, that you know it's totally fine <laughs> like it's totally fine and yeah. i you know a lot of my friends have very but... valid criticisms towards it but if your criticisms boil yeah. down to minor nitpicks uh that's when i take issue i think and you say and you say people are objectively wrong yeah. for liking yeah. it yeah that's then... when i take issue Pissed yeah. off. <laughs> that that's absolutely when i take issue how's that gate how's that gate you're keeping <laughs> I like the dedication to your Carrie Fisher here as well at the end of the credits. Mm-hmm. It's um, yeah, yeah, it's very, very emotionally done. Ah, in loving memory of our yeah. princess Carrie Fisher, brilliant. And I love the oh, it's just so well done, and I think <clears throat> that, that's it is frustrating because this this film has so much love in it. And it's got such a positive message, mm-hmm. and it is, it really is frustrating that it spawned so much hate, like with the discourse surrounding it. It has, yeah. Um, of all the films to do mm-hmm. that, the one with arguably the most sort of optimistic and hopeful message is the one that sort of gets the yeah. most hate. And and the discourse yeah. surrounding, it. and like we sp- spoke about earlier, Kelly Marie Tran and and all that. Which is gross. It's absolutely mm-hmm. disgusting. But yeah, because I saw a recent video with the title saying "The Last Jedi Revisited: Why It's Still Terrible." <laughs> Why are you doing yeah. it then? Why are you looking over it? There's no point. Your opinion hasn't yeah, changed. Exactly. And yeah, and it's um, the the person, the individual who made that video. He's He's pretty much the worst type of fan. Anyone who defends it, he just says, "Sorry, I criticized um, your. Sorry, I hurt your feelings by criticizing your awful movie." Oh god! Yeah, uh, it's just. And this um, this same individual was getting on at Channel Awesome back in 2018 for saying, you know, their apology. I regret that you feel that way. So uh, <laughs> the circle is now complete. <laughs> right? Yeah. I d- yeah. It's um. Oh, interesting! They're like Chewbacca consultant Peter Mayhew. <laughs> Peter yeah, so Mayhew, I guess that he yeah. wasn't as involved in this one. Um, yeah, no, uh, it, it is frustrating, and I think because most of the people I know who don't like it for very valid reasons got over it, got over yeah. it when it first came out. But there yeah, are people exactly. out there who like it's been nearly four years. Like, get over yeah, cause it. Yeah, because I like this film, and as you've said, we're both um, defenders of it, but. It doesn't keep us up oh, at yeah. night if people don't oh, like yeah, it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because the way some people talk, when people when people make it their career not liking this film, it you almost think. So do you just go to bed having nightmares that people think differently to you and people like it unironically? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um... Like can't. Yeah. Yeah, why should you care what people think to you? Because you're probably never going to meet them in real life. Yeah, exactly. And and since yep. this, <laughs> since this, we've had Solo, Rise of Skywalker, season seven of the Clone Wars, the Mandalorian t- seasons Mandalorian. one and two. There's plenty out there for you to enjoy. Yeah, it killed the Last Jedi. Killed Star Wars, <laughs> which is why we're getting. Yeah. Um, which is why we've had two. F- I mean, I know Solo didn't do very well, but yeah, we've we've had two <laughs> films after this. We've had a TV series, an old animated series that got resurrected yeah. for one final season, yeah. and we've got plenty more TV series on the well, way. They've we? announced like twenty TV series or something, yeah. like animated <laughs> and live action. Yeah, like yeah, we've got Kenobi coming next year. Yeah, I think. I think yeah, which. 
that'll be cool. I think Star Wars now, its life is going to be living on Disney Plus, really, with the TV series, because they've not announced any new films, yeah, really. I think... Yeah, because... Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it killed off, like, theatrical oh, no. release Star Wars films, but it's more the case of, well, where do you go from here? You can't really do another trilogy, well, yeah. because it yeah. just feel a bit redundant. It, again, it just feel like repeat yeah so that's why i think it's fine for the series to exist in television series yeah, ex- exactly my thoughts like you've wrapped up the skywalker su- uh, saga Li- you know don't do any more star wars films for a while let that dust settle before revisiting that well like i'm I'm happy for star yeah. wars to exist as tv shows now for a, for a good while at yeah. least i think it'd be a mistake to do mm-hmm, to do definitely. more films just yet let it settle and let the hype mm-hmm. build back up again for a new film. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I just... It's baffling that it still causes controversy like four years on. Um, it's it's <laughs> It really is nuts. But I just, I just think it's a really well put together film. It's so thematically very rich and a joy to watch. Um, stunning mm-hmm. shots in there. Ryan Johnson is just wonderful. It is, like, yeah. It's yeah. a... Um... I think it would have been cool if he did the whole trilogy. Oh, same, <laughs> absolutely. Because yeah. just some of the some of the shots in there, like the director, yeah. like I spoke about earlier, like the energy and the camera work and everything, it's so well done. Mhm. And these credits are only about six or seven minutes. Oh long. yeah, they're not as long. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. When we were doing the Force Awakens the last Force time. Force Awakens. <laughs> I forgot how long they were. This is yeah. about the, a, a reasonable time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just yeah, we're nearly at the end. Just at the yeah. So yeah, just at the time, it just left me wanting more, and uh, it's a wonderful film. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I was disappointed by Rise of Skywalker, but I'm not going to make a career out oh, of yeah, right. hating the film. <laughs> ah. Because I'm an adult <laughs> and I'm grown up. You'll grow up one yeah, day. Yeah, one day. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but someday. But yeah. someday. <laughs> yeah. So that is all for The Last Jedi. Yes, indeed. Only one more in the Skywalker saga to go. Yes, indeed. I hope you enjoyed the commentary, everyone. Um, we'll be back next time with The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, <laughs> should be a very loaded discussion mm-hmm. on that one. Um, but yeah. Yeah. We'll see you then. In the meantime, go subscribe to Isaac's channel, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.